I think it's working because I can hear us in the headset. That's good news. We're timing off on the thing and we have a computer backup. So worst case scenario, we just use the single track. Great. Like heathens. <laughs> and it's fine. Like Neanderthals. Like back in the old days when we had one microphone. <laughs> That's the story, Morning Glory. It's a good one. What a day. We did cross 10 million views on TikTok Holy recently. Holy shit. So, and we've made zero dollars from <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, fame is meaningless. No, it's actually kind of fine. I really don't mind. I love that. I genuinely don't. It's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Anyway, I thought that was kind of fun. That is really fun. And on that note, hi, Alan. Hi, Aaron. Hi, how are you? I'm cold. How are you? Yeah, it was cold. It's been a cold one. It has been a cold one. It's been cold out there. Yeah. Um, I have not been as cold as other people. Oh, yes, of course. Because I, <laughs> I would leave if only I could find reason. I mean, <laughs> because I grew up in New England. Mm-hmm. Noah Khan, for those who aren't initiated. Uh, <laughs> it's true, though. I am an asshole because I grew up in New England. And also, no. um, it means I'm impervious to cold. I love this for you. That's not true at all. I was going to say, though. That's, that's a little true. sad. I like being cold. No. Yeah. You get to cozy up. like once. I like being cold from the comfort of my couch. Correct. With like a scented candle going. Lights are dim. So I'm real. cocooned in a little blanket. Uh, yeah. As many blankies as yeah. humanly possible Absolutely. without overheating. I do prefer a room to be cold-er. Mm-hmm. So that way I can then snuggle in a blanket and yeah. not overheat. I hate being hot. That's the worst. But I love being warm in a cold space yeah yeah it's it's the cozy factor Mm -hmm. like there's something like satisfying about the feeling of like even though it's cold out there i'm warm like right right now i'm i made this happen i have uh i've beaten the elements (laughs) exactly (laughs) i am avatar (laughs) i am like yeah i'm avatar (laughs) i can airbend um no i was gonna say it's like i've climbed mount everest (laughs) i'm like one of those athletes that does stuff (laughs) yeah and then you just set up a tent and cozy up and And then you just see me on in my hoodie (laughs) (laughs) the perfect the the most cozy that a person can get is at the top of mount everest yeah (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot of dead people on that mountain anyway (laughs) and on that cheery note and on that note uh let's see how do we segue we don't i don't think there's any saving that (laughs) i don't don't think you can say that (laughs) i think it's done oh man it's done is done clearly we're doing great that was it goodbye everybody (laughs) thanks for joining thanks for tuning in (laughs) yeah 10 million views on tiktok one episode takes it all down (laughs) uh we joke we do anyway um, my heat did go out for like four days. That, that was super fun. Is heinous. I didn't notice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> great. My so downstairs notice obviously. So of the course. the heat is for the whole building and whatever. Mm. Um, hi and welcome to the Fick List. <laughs> oh. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back to the Fick List. Um, so uh, we are living on the East Coast that has been bom- bombarded. I almost said bamboozled, but that's not it. <laughs> My brain is not making words today. This is great. It's really a struggle. A good omen for yeah. <laughs> what's we're doing to come. great on this audio <laughs> medium today. I really just like can't put words together. Bombarded with a whole whopping three inches of snow, but yeah. in you know the sort of mid Atlantic corridor, that is a lot of snow for this area, and people just don't know how to deal with it. No, they freak out. Yep, and apparently neither did the heating system in my building because it. <laughs> conked out real quick um devastating my landlords like to do the landlord special whenever they can so they sent the handyman who doesn't know how to do anything to bless his heart to uh check out the radiators and then they had to call three different plumbers because (laughs) each plumber was like this is an expensive fix and my landlord was like i don't want to pay for that and they were like well we're at an impasse (laughs) (laughs) just kept going until he found until he found a cheap plumber that Uh, gave him a price he liked yeah and eventually i mean literally we don't know how it got fixed because they didn't really do anything they just like drained the radiator and then it started working again so it was very odd like it just kicked on Maybe like 24 he, hours later they just like knocked it on they the side with a wrench and yeah. they're like all right there you go i don't know but i was okay like my i didn't notice like my apartment was cold yeah but i grew up in a house where my dad did not want to turn on the heat because he was a cheap cheap mm, bastard mm-hmm. uh and so i grew up in a house that was kept at a steady 55 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so like i was like i'm 
good. I've got my sweatpants on. I, yep. I have two pairs of socks. Everything is grand. I haven't had frostbite yet. I can't see my breath, so it's fine. And I didn't realize that the heat was out until the handyman came and was like, do you have heat? And he walked in my apartment and went, ooh, no, you don't. <laughs> I was like, huh? And there, yeah, you are, there you are all bundled up, confused. What do I you was mean? delighted with my life because normally this apartment's too hot for me because oh, the radiators fair. can be kind of aggressive. Anyway, that was my most recent. I'm very clearly a 30 year old woman where I was like, let me tell you this very in depth story about, I <laughs> about home heating issues, HVAC <laughs> problems. Yeah. How have you been, Alan? <laughs> I've been good. Yeah, I feel like I the end of my year was rough not rough Mm -hmm. in like a sense of like a lot of bad things happened or anything but i feel like i had been running for a long time i was just like doing so much and i was trying to make sure um that that i'd set myself up for success so i went my job closed down for two weeks Mm -hmm. um going into the new year um or going into the holiday season excuse me uh and i am shifting my role from i currently am like the executive assistant for three people um, and I will no longer be that. I'm going to be the executive assistant to the CEO mm-hmm. um, starting February. Um, and so I was trying to set myself as up for success as much as possible mm-hmm. before leaving for the holiday, even though it meant like I was working, like I was doing 200% output essentially, as opposed right. to what I would usually do, mm-hmm. um, especially in December. Because I feel like my brain started shutting down after Thanksgiving. And oh, yeah. so it was like fighting the like fighting myself to not just like lay on my couch and watch christmas movies it is senioritis of the year yes exactly you get to the end, you're is. like fuck this shit yeah it, you <laughs> that's get, a january me problem <laughs> you get to december 20th and you're like why am i still working yeah, <laughs> no I one wants be. to be working right now yeah. we live in a capitalistic hellscape anyway um <laughs> really the theme of this season <laughs> yeah truly <laughs> oh god um yeah so i feel like i was running 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 and i was getting a lot of stuff done and then uh rang in the new year so i i made a pretty conscious choice to end the end last year from a place of like i read a i read a a tumblr post that summarized it really where where, it's, where they were just like just be gentle with yourself you know have a it's okay to have like a gentle ending to a year and doesn't mm-hmm. have to go out with a bang it doesn't have to be anything big and i was like that's kind of the vibe i want i just want yeah. something that is soft and like warm and i don't really care about anything else um so that was good and then um my therapist broke me um the session before i flew home (laughs) to see my family jesus yeah (laughs) i was like what (laughs) i was like oh therapist we like whoa this took a turn (laughs) i just had completely forgotten i got to a point where essentially i was talking to him about my family and um i think i've talked about this on here but Mm -hmm. i my my relationship with my family is pretty fraught um surprise surprise uh and so going home for the holidays is always feels like such a hurdle for me and i was trying yeah. really hard to be like okay when i was there over the summer we made really good leaps and bounds you know we mm-hmm. set a good foundation like it should be better but i just kept running into all these situ- kind of same situations where like i already booked the flight i booked the airbnb and i was there i was like begging them to f- find some way to pick me up from the airport and i'm mm-hmm. like i just feel like i and i was telling my therapist i was like i just I'm tired of feeling like I keep giving and giving and giving and Mm. I just, I'm not getting anything back. And he kind of was just like, and maybe you never will. And maybe you just got to be okay with knowing that you're not going to get the things back that you want. And I was like, I like that answer. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, well, fuck you. (laughs) And (laughs) And fuck that. And I'm done. (laughs) Because it just basically boiled down to like, I unconsciously, I hadn't realized how much of my life and how much of what I was doing, like all of the wellness that I had been doing, I think I would had unconsciously, subconsciously been um, like, I thought that if I healed enough or that if I grew enough as a person, I could go home and then kind of maybe not rub some of that off but like Mm. be like that that would be enough for me to have the like kind Mm. of warm loving family you know dynamic that I've always wanted and it was just hurting me because I you know relationships are a two-sided street and it it just couldn't keep coming from me um and it was a hard realization to be like okay so my family's just never gonna be what I want it to be and releasing all myself from all of that like um those expectations and like so then what am i doing it for (laughs) and then the realization of like oh you should be doing it for yourself for the Mm -hmm. sake of living that is your life 
So that was a whole can of enchiladas that I forgot had been opened right before I flew yeah. home. You're like, oh, yeah, all of that deep-seated drama. Super <laughs> well, cause, fun. Because here's the thing is, like, I went home and it was what it was, mm-hmm. which was rough. Um, and I came back and I had a, a follow-up session with James where essentially I had come to realize, like, oh, not just like the healing or like not it's just how much my expectations had been like making me miserable Mm. and like learning to just be like i have to acknowledge that like you know if people are gonna want to do things for me then they'll do them and like i can't keep giving things with the expectation of like this is how i want to be treated so treat me the the same way like because people are different you know right and of course that's not to say that like there shouldn't be reciprocity between people. But I think that if there's a lack of reciprocity, it speaks a lot to the relationship. And like, do I want to put myself in a place where I am close to people that don't reciprocate? Um, And so it's just, it has really kind of changed my outlook on things. And I have been feeling more calm and like, even down to like, I used to stress so much in my head about like, Oh, I have to wait until I have my thoughts fully formed out before talking and now, and it was in a in a bid to be like, I can't, I want to make sure that I come across as, you know, charming, as as funny, or as mm-hmm. intelligent, et cetera. And all of these, like, expectations of, like, oh, if I wait until I have my words spoken, then that's what people are going to think of me. It's not true. And, you know, I should just, like, just talk, and, you know, and it'll be what it'll be. And so I'm trying to really lean into that vibe mm-hmm. of it starting the year. I love that for you. Yeah. I think you should. I'm, it's going well thus far but you know we're three weeks into the year so we'll see <laughs> yeah it's kind of like me trying to like eat better i'm like mm, <laughs> how successful is this gonna be in the long term mm-hmm. Do you think yep. what's really good is sugar <laughs> <laughs> no like i think that's totally valid and what i'm hearing you sort of like pinpoint to is like the question of effort and like how much mm-hmm. effort do you put in without expectation of like reciprocity mm-hmm. and like at what point do you put the effort in for yourself versus yeah. trying to get something out of it? And like, how, how much can you sort of like, what is your baseline? This is how I want to be as a person, regardless of what comes back at me mm-hmm. versus I'm putting in X amount of effort because I think it's going to come back in some way. Exactly. And that sort of gap is a tricky thing to navigate, Agreed. especially with family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's also very freeing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It has, it has literally like, I just, I feel so much, like, clearer. And, like, yeah. and I, I don't know. I don't want it to come, like, I, I had my eat, pray, love moment, <laughs> which is not at all. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> like, I fully didn't do that. You're right, exactly. <laughs> I did not go on, like, a white woman trip to India. Like, it's cool. <laughs> but I do. I didn't learn yoga. <laughs> but I do feel just, like, lighter. Like, it just yeah. feels nice. And, like. That's good. Yeah, there are times in which I, like, stumble over my words where I'm, like, wish I would have thought about how I said that a little more. But it's, like, it's fine. Like, overall, yeah. it just. It doesn't matter as much as I think as as it felt like in my head. Yeah. I think now that I'm an old aged woman, an old crone <laughs> of uh, 31 true. whole years old oh, man. as of literally last week, I, uh, <laughs> now that I'm ancient. <laughs> yeah. Any any listeners right now who are above 31 are just like immediately. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. It's that gif of Tim Allen and the Santa Claus just turning into a <laughs> yeah. man. Well, to be fair, so my holidays, I went home and there was a wedding and it was a whole thing. I've told mm-hmm. Alan the whole story. It's a clusterfuck of a situation. <laughs> I don't feel it's not my story to tell, so I'm not going to tell it on here, but mm-hmm. just know that it's it's some fucked up shit uh and so but the nice thing about that whole wedding is that i spent the entire time nobody recognized me and when they did they were like how old are you now like 25 26 and i was like this is the greatest day of my life (laughs) i don't mean to buy into this whole like aging thing sure but at the same time that felt fucking awesome (laughs) absolutely I look like a youth. I am a youth. Ah. And they were like, you haven't aged like at all. And I was like, please say more. Please say more. Just please speak into this microphone. Yeah, I was like, can I get that in writing? Please? <laughs> <laughs> Will you get, we can, where's the nearest witness? <laughs> I need someone to notarize that. Um, but it was really fun. Everybody thought I was like 25, 26. Oh, my God. I love that for you. It was fantastic. Yeah. I was like, okay. I normally, I don't really care about aging and all that kind sure. of stuff. Like, it really doesn't bother me. I don't wear makeup anymore. Um, like, I literally gave up during the pandemic. So I was like, why? And then I had to throw it all out because it all got old and crusty and yep. gross. So I literally don't own makeup anymore. Love that for you. I don't do it. The skincare stuff. Have you been following along with the skincare saga with like the 10 year olds at Sephora? Oh, I, I like, I feel like my FYP skimmed on the edge of that. Like people reacting mm. to it. And I was like, I don't know what's going on there. And then I swerved out of there. Yep. So valid. I did that with, um, 
what was the most recent one? Oh, with all the Gypsy Rose Blanchard stuff. Oh, I did yeah. not want to watch that go down because I knew exactly what was going to happen, and it did. Mm-hmm. I was like, y'all are going to make be weird about this yep. and turn her into this sort of like pseudo celebrity, mm-hmm. and then she's going to turn out to be like a person with a lot of problems and yep. flaws. She's going to say one thing, and you're going to turn. Guess what happened? Uh, and yep. I was like, mm, in my aged 31 years of life, I've seen this. <laughs> I have no my I've long this 31 years um <laughs> where was I going with that before I talked about how young and beautiful I am <laughs> um you were talking wedding. about um your holidays the holidays wedding were fucked up. and um <laughs> it's gone I hope I was telling a good story <laughs> if it was meant to be it'll come back yeah well you were talking you were being very eloquent about your family and balancing your needs versus you know expectations mm-hmm. and all that stuff you were being very thoughtful and then i chimed in with my bullshit i don't think it was bullshit at all hmm. i'm gonna go back and listen to the recording and be like girl <laughs> <laughs> i know exactly that, what you yeah, mean this, this story was recorded and now it's just gone but i'm not gonna <laughs> stop and then go re-record because i'm afraid that if i turn off the soundboard everything <laughs> right. will break <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Moral of the story. Um, oh, Sephora 10-year-olds. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> are the Sephora 10-year-old thing, like, really just to say that, like, I think all children are gremlins. And yeah. really, that is a reflection of poor parenting. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, no, not sorry true. at all. But, like, the le- like all the people who are complaining about children at Sephora, I'm like, okay. First of all, I've gotten kicked out of my fair share of Apple stores for taking too many weird selfies with my friends on their computers <laughs> that people want to try. Like, we've all done it. Second of all, have you seen adults recently? Like, where do you think they learned that behavior? Oh God, Come yeah. on. I was like, if I'm sorry, if you, like, full tackled someone in the grocery store for toilet paper in 2020, I don't want to hear fucking shit about 10-year-olds in <laughs> Sephora from you. Amen. Because that behavior is learned. Like, yeah. they're picking that up from someone. And, like sorry if you also if you like block tackled somebody at target for the most recent stanley cup i also don't want to hear your opinions no. about kids in sephora but what and then sort of stepping back again mm-hmm. the the piece of that that really makes me sad is seeing all these 10 year olds sort of like fall back into the capitalist aging mm-hmm. trap so young yeah because i'm like man i kind of thought we were like headed down a road of like fuck the aging thing mm-hmm. and like everyone can kind of be natural because like who has the money or the time to really like fuck with that shit anymore right um and we'd kind of been moving towards a more like natural aging place mm-hmm. for like a hot minute and then i think like capitalism dug its heels in and was like we can capitalize on that and now like the 10 year olds are doing like retinols and stuff which Oof. are they, they're giving themselves chemical burns right basically um and destroying their skin barrier but i was like this is just sad like mm-hmm. i thought we were like heading away from this and frankly we've like looped all the way back around and now it's but it's like framed in a different way right real bummer it is yeah real bummer anyway (laughs) (laughs) this this episode ostensibly was not going to be about any of the things that we just talked (laughs) (laughs) but you know if you're here you're queer and you know that we probably don't or you're an ally that's cool too Uh, (laughs) you may not actually be queer who knows um we're genuinely fine um but also you probably know that we this season has been a season of twists and turns and not a single episode has been what we thought it was gonna be frankly this whole season's been kind of a clusterfuck so here we are <laughs> indeed I, I liked the season of twists and turns better than the clusterfuck yeah. branding but yes we if, run the gamut <laughs> if i say it first then other our critics can't say it <laughs> not that we really have critics but right. i think i'm our only critic <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so it's it you know but we figured we'd come back do one more episode yeah. just to say you know happy holidays yeah. it was a good one <laughs> considering we missed all of them we were like we'll get in one more episode before Chris-. no and, yeah no that that, that was a negative that was a negative nancy yeah correct go back to like five minutes to when i was saying i was going to 200 <laughs> percent. yeah no time i do think it's wild that we have the same job now yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's absolutely wild so for the listeners at home we're both executive assistants mm-hmm. uh to c-suite level people um me to a cfo and alan to a ceo and now alan wins because the ceo is higher than the cfo <laughs> um so i'm gonna have to <laughs> that, that, i'm gonna have to get the president so <laughs> if it makes you feel better i think you win the salary <laughs> game because i think you get paid more than i, I do know. yeah it depends yeah. um i do have a pension there you go pension, congratulations yeah, yeah. State you job, have a union man. you do have a union yeah speaking of unions <laughs> 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 um 
Uh, no, there really wasn't anything to say about unions other than that that was part of the reason that this season got really messed up was that we were trying to be in solidarity with unions and now we're in, it ruined it. We didn't do anything. Yeah. Which is a real bummer. Well, let me sure, let's reframe. It's not that we, we did a lot. Do, we didn't. It's not that we didn't do anything. It's that we did things differently. We tried yeah. new things. We improvised. We, we adapted. Did. We overcame. We did. We girl boss gatekeeped. <laughs> girl <laughs> mathed. Yeah. Girl dinnered. <laughs> Correct. All the, things. All the things. All the girly things. All the girl things. No, I mean it was sort of fun. We spent the you know 2023 season mm. um i'm speaking as if we're a football team yeah. uh, <laughs> they got us in the first half not gonna lie yeah. uh <laughs> we, we really spent our time like examining like you know exploring and trying to do other stuff and mm. figuring out what else we could do that was like still interesting and i think we've learned a lot frankly about agreed we've we've so much the <laughs> it's like the, the treasure is the friends we made along the way like that kind of bullshit i've been watching a lot of expedition unknown you... <laughs> and every episode i can tell you exactly what's going to happen yes. in every episode because i've seen 12 seasons of it in three weeks um he's like we're gonna find the lost treasure of this ancient civilization that may or may not be underwater because he's a professional diver oh interesting and then they go through a whole season like a whole episode where it's like they talk to this guy who specializes in treasure and his name is probably like bill (laughs) (laughs) and he has some kind of weird boat and then they go well maybe we'll see it on sonar and then they're like oh my god there's something on the sonar (laughs) and then they go down into the ocean the visibility is bad and they're like but there's a thing it's not the thing we're looking for though and then at the end there's like some like shot that's just like we, we may not have found the treasure. Maybe the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> and it's every episode. Oh. And it I think about that every... That's my Roman Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little hype? <laughs> I love this for you. That's great. My brain is mashed potatoes, man. Yeah, that's very fair. Yep. That was delightful. Thanks. Yeah, I'm a little worried about the sheer amount of expedition and knowing you've managed to go yeah. through in a three-week span. It's bad. Um, But you know what? It's comforting. Yeah, it's garbage TV is a thing. It's like yeah. a, it's a show that you can have on in the background. In the background. And that's how I've gotten through it is that I literally will put it on in the morning and then go about cleaning my apartment or doing whatever and I'll check in and I'll be like, have they found the treasure yet? No. And then like move on <laughs> with my life. Uh, so that's how I've gotten through it. I haven't sit like I haven't, I haven't like Sad had and, and like it. focused and been like, are they going to find it today? <laughs> No, the answer is no. <laughs> they found one thing, which was very cool. Oh my God. But the only reason they found it is because the guy who was like, two steps away from finding it paused called josh gates and was like do you want to make a show about finding this and he was like yes i do (laughs) and so they like they found basically there's this treasure hunt thing called the secret from the 80s and it's like a book and there's 13 of them or whatever and each one corresponds to a gem and if you find the thing you get the gem they found the one in boston oh fine basically and the guy who had been the guy was like 99 percent sure he knew where it was going to be like very seriously like knew what he was going on and then he was like if i call josh gates i'll put it on tv <laughs> and he'll pay for the excavator <laughs> amazing <laughs> so genius that's and that's the one thing that they found well look at that i love that for josh gates and for that person yeah, yeah. and for us for making friends along the way the friends <laughs> along treasure. the way should we segue that into our Ko-Fi support? <laughs> yes, I think that that makes a lot of sense. It I does. think w- we have a few people that have signed up recently, we right? Do. Yeah, because I, I saw sure quite a saw few that. notifications come in. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, it's awesome. So we have, if you don't know this, we have a Ko-Fi coffee Ko-Fi thing, K-O dash F-I, where <laughs> the community can support us if they so choose to, you know, and you can donate in truly any amount. I set it at one dollar was the minimum because it wouldn't let me do any less than that. <laughs> um, but there, you can do one off. Uh, donations or you can also become what's called a friend of the pod and we have our stalwart friend of the pod who i think is coming up almost on a year oh my god not quite but close that's amazing uh, dion, dion we love um you are first you'll always hold a special place in my heart <laughs> for being the one um because you know it was very fun and we were like we'll probably just have like one supporter and it'll be really cool yeah um we now have four additional for a total of five. Oh my god um and when i tell you those emails came in and i damn near cried friends yeah um we need to give a resounding shout out and deep love to Haley, ally leo and charlotte Haley, ally leo and charlotte yes thank you so much this is for you this is a round of applause, oh, oh. Round of applause. geraldine is like what the fuck yeah geraldine was like what the fuck <laughs> um we also need to say thank you to bailey for donating one time and also wishing us a happy new year oh bailey thank you so much Thanks, happy bailey. new year to you so i think one cool thing to know like if if you're wondering if small amounts make a difference 
they absolutely do because um with the five people who are now our recurring members over the course of the year um their like dollar amount like pretty small amount dollar amount donations per year mm-hmm. will cumulatively pay for the majority of our fees for that the year incredible yep it's like it's not exactly even but it's close but more than we had and it's more than we had and like that is to say that like truly a dollar makes a difference when yeah. you're talking about like indie podcasters mm-hmm. so if anybody's ever interested please never ever feel like you have to but mm-hmm. if you're somebody who's listened to our podcast and want to send us something like that is a way to support us in a way that has a very tangible impact um because you pay for like our website hosting fees which Mm -hmm. are an annual cost and Mm -hmm. um same with like soundcloud fees Mm -hmm. we're gonna have to re-up our domain (laughs) (laughs) the ficklist.com which is great but you have to you know pay for those every couple years and such so that has been really really wonderful so thank you thank you thank you um we always shout out our ko-fi people now at the beginning of every episode which i think is a good habit to get into i agree um and again thank you your support means the world to us thank you it really does it's a real vote of confidence that you like like our stuff, yeah. which is kind of unreal because it still very much feels like we're sort of talking into a void most times. It's just me and Alan and my cat, yeah, <laughs> you know, in my dining room table. <laughs> exactly. And then it's like, oh, like people actually listen to this and enjoy it, which yeah. is wild. Yeah, it, it is really like it, it like it, it takes me out every time uh-huh. like someone or something says that they, they've seen it or like there's an, a new review, which I check constantly yeah. <laughs> to see if there is um so yeah it's just it means means a lot thank yeah. you thank you all yeah. for listening even yeah especially this year when it's like we haven't been doing our usual content yeah thanks um, for sticking through us pre- with us through that yeah one of our um discord folk even was like i kind of liked this season better because i don't <sighs> read a lot of the stuff that you guys read i see yeah fair yeah so it was like not that it was like not to like diss on the regular format like the regular format is what got me into it but right. you know i was able to sort of like feel more in the loop basically yeah. was what they were saying and i thought that was really really helpful feedback actually and i agree it's like oh okay so we should maybe think about incorporating more of those sort of general fandom moments yeah in along with when we get back into reading mm-hmm. you know because the core of the fic list is that it's a book club so we Correct. read things but i think there's a way to continue to incorporate like fandom moments and fandom history into things in a little bit more intentional way yeah i agree which yeah which is fun and you know Who's to say maybe eventually it gets, we may just do like a, a random one-off here. They're mm-hmm. just us chatting. I think also it's just yeah. been a good time. Yeah. It's been really fun. It has been really fun. And it's also really easy to edit. Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. It's, it's easier in a lot of ways because our other episodes are, who be ready for those three hour cuts though. Because yeah. also we can talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're at a half hour already. No, we're not. Yeah. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. <gasps> we're 28, in- 29. We're on the intro of this. Yeah, we're literally on the intro. <laughs> Three hour tour. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe I I have an outline. I love I love this. So I can love an outline. We love an outline. Um, technically, we've gotten through the intro into the Ko-Fi supporters. So oh, now, right. So we're technically too deep on this outline. Hell yes. Um, the next options I have are real world updates or fic list updates. <laughs> I don't know what I meant by real world updates. Well, I wonder if that's, we kind of did that too, where we just kind of gave updates on ourselves. Well, I talked a lot about myself. Did you True. have a moment? Where you, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Great. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I, my family is also chaotic um, in a different way uh, <laughs> where, you know, and we had a wedding and I feel like there are certain events in mm. a family sort of trajectory where your real dysfunction comes out to play <laughs> and a wedding can be one of them. Absolutely. It's like weddings, funerals, yep. uh, like big anniversaries, like if uh-huh. there's a big party like a or party, something, yeah, yeah. that's when you start to have sort of like weird shit happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was my life over the Christmas holiday and then uh nearer to my birthday which is recently Mm -hmm. um but otherwise it's been fine it's just been very busy yeah which i like don't i was like winter is for hibernating exactly yeah that's surprising winter is for sleeping why (laughs) has it been so busy and like we're only gonna get we're not gonna necessarily get a break (laughs) (laughs) right because we literally have a thing coming up in march hint hint (laughs) listen to the rest of the episode that like we have to prep for so it's like that's all like we're not really taking time off yeah there goes some of that time yeah like after this we will be taking a break from putting out episodes Mm -hmm. not that we've been particularly consistent (laughs) but you know whatever that's the deal um you know that that's how it is when you've got two executive assistants (laughs) we have high ranking jobs oh here's a fun one that i didn't tell you oh okay yes (laughs) i'm fully delulu would you like to know why yes tell me everything i applied for raya (laughs) 
<laughs> the dating app. <gasps> Wait a minute. I'm take a step back. What? What I is this? In, oh, do you not know what Raya no. is? No. Okay, so Raya is a dating app that used to be exclusively for celebrities. Oh. You had to be like a bona fide celebrity to be on yeah. it, but they've opened it up to sort of the plebes. Um, so I'm sure it's degraded over time, but whatever. And I thought it would be really funny to put in an application. Mostly at Marissa. Hi, Marissa's urging because she was like, be Delulu. Like, live. It's the Salulu. Like, live in your life. (laughs) Do it. That is hysterical. Do it. And I was like, "Uh," and then I like looked at it and I was like, okay. The funny thing about it is that they are very clearly going for like influencer type people. Uh, The sort of like pick me is that have. Wow, that was harsh. (laughs) (laughs) It's also really real. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I don't like dating apps anyway. They're not great for an ace person, but whatever. I kind of thought this would be funny. Yeah. Um, And they're very clearly like looking for somebody with like a like a certain type of online presence. Content creator. Yeah. Or like people who just like have a online presence a following. that's not yeah. fan fiction related right. um <laughs> which i was like i have 10 million views on tiktok but <laughs> they're all about fan fiction um there's a niche out there you can't actually link so when you put in your application you basically put your name in your email and then mm. your instagram handle uh, my instagram is private <laughs> and i'm not changing it yeah because yeah. i was like no not worth it it's exclusive uh, yeah and then they ask you what you do. And I just said executive assistant. And they were like, where? And I was like, not disclosed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to make them think that I'm someone like fancy assistant. I love that. That's genius. Yeah. And I was like, this will be funny. Um, I don't think I'm going to get selected for this dating app for a myriad of reasons. But mm. I did. Somebody that I know uh, is on that app. Wild. And so I like you can put in like a referral request or whatever. <gasps> so I put it in and then texted him because I haven't been I haven't talked to him in I don't know how long. It was sure. an actor that I worked with forever ago. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, so sorry. Um, I know we haven't talked to like literal years. How you doing? Also, if you get a notification, <laughs> feel free to ignore it. I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> he was like, no, I'll, I'll put you. I'll put in a good word nice. for you. And I was like, thanks. Um. Well, I'm 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 hopeful. You know, I'm gonna cross my fingers that you get on thanks. this dating app. Yeah. I think it's funny. Um, I <laughs> there's a piece of me that's like, well, we know that Hosier has a profile. <laughs> yes, and yes! you know, if that were to work out, that'd be fun. That would be that'd be cool. Absolutely wonderful. I can yes. I can overlook the fact that he's a man because <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Hosier. He would be like an exception. He's like he's, a fae, basically. He's really a man written by a woman. Yes, 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 yes. Like and it, like, I'm sure he's not like that in real life, but you know, whatever. He seems delightful. Yeah. Also, if you have the Unreal Unearth vinyl, <laughs> I showed this to Alan 20 minutes ago, yes. like before we started recording. There's an insert in that record. I was like, what Tumblr girly <laughs> did this to me? <laughs> that, what your Their art director or whoever knew what they were doing. Because mm-hmm. there's an insert where it's a double-sided photo. And on one side, it's him laying on his back in the dirt. Mm-hmm. And then if you flip it over, it's a black and white photo. Oh profile view with his hands in front of his face stunning with his like beautiful little eyelashes and i'm like fuck you yep i picked it up and i went oh <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> and i, I sent it to like four people i was like this isn't good <laughs> this is bad and they were like mm. and then i saved those photos to my phone <laughs> anyway the reasonable reasonable response i might have to cut this from the episode no it, <laughs> no <laughs> it's, it'll be something cute to play girl. at your wedding yeah in, in my irish estate that yes. i'll get i'm really just looking for a way out of here <laughs> way out of this country <laughs> i feel that i keep looking into irish citizenship by descent i don't qualify but i keep checking just in case <laughs> you can in theory it's like the furthest they go back is grandparents and then you can do great grandparents if they registered for uh like with this particular service or whatever by a certain date and i was like nope there's no way i have a great grandparent who is literally irish like from ireland but they didn't register <sighs> anything bummer yeah so it's one of those things where i was like god damn mm-hmm. i want to do this you know 2024 i i'm not prepared to talk about what 2024 is going to be like yeah i'm full of fear so <laughs> in terms of real world updates we're going to stick with us yeah rather I than the agree. greater world because it's too much yeah that is way too much to try and carry into this conversation yeah 100 percent should we offer now Ficklist specific updates? Yeah, let's do it. So, what did we not talk about? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. We talked a lot. <laughs> we went to New York Comic Con. Yes. Which I think we've talked about in a previous I episode. I think so too. If we haven't, it happened. It was great. Yeah, we were phenomenal. Yeah, we crushed it. We were obviously the best people at New York Comic Con. Agreed. The room far. was nearly was basically full. Yeah, we had like we played to a thousand people. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. which was like it was very exclusive to get in of standing room. It only. was. Yeah, yeah. Um. 
<laughs> no, there was like 400 to 500 people there. They had a great time. It was a really wonderful crowd. Yeah. Um, it's on YouTube if you want to watch our little panel. Um, oh, yeah. It is on YouTube. It has the most that. views of any video that we've ever posted other than the shorts. Shorts don't count because they're TikTok based. Yeah. They're TikTok light. Um, <laughs> in terms of like actual views, it has like 175. Yes. Look at us go. We average six. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was like, this is great. We'll take it. Yeah. Like, a, I don't know how many times improvement. <laughs> so we did new york comic-con we did. and then we released our our hidden episode yeah that from we the had vault. yeah the from the vault episode which was our flag means death and avatar for a split second and thank you my by the way for mm. catching i had posted our little teaser that was like two new fandom stars uh our flag means death and good omens and my was like you did go to good omens last episode I was like, god damn it i meant avatar <laughs> it's avatar the last airbender incredible <sighs> my brain just broke and in my brain i was like yeah we talked about that good omens fic that you sent and then we never released it now we fully did release it yeah. it's fine um, but it was around the same timeline yeah, so my really saved my ass thank you my uh, yeah once again <laughs> friend friend heart friend uh-huh. <laughs> delightful human being um so we did that and then let's see we both had lives that we had to deal with yeah and then we got some news. Yeah, pretty recently. I, pretty I recently, say. I would say yeah. like a couple weeks ago. Do you want to share it or shall I? Um, I think you can. I think you are so excited about it. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> excited about it. So if you are going to come to AwesomeCon DC, which you may know that we have been at a couple of times, and we've done, you know, a reasonable one panel per yeah, we, <laughs> per we, year. we average a panel a year. A panel a year. This year they gave us three panels. <laughs> Three whole panels. Three separate panels. It's not the same thing three times, y'all. Yeah. It's three entirely separate entities <sighs> in a, three days. That's a 300% growth. <laughs> it's a 300% growth, um, which is going to be super fun. We're yeah. very excited about it. Um, we don't yet have the details, but we will share the exact information when we know it. We just know that we're going to have these three panels at some point throughout the weekend, which mm-hmm. is March 8th through 10th, 2024. Yep. So if you're at all interested in attending, if you're going to be in the D.C. area or if you could come travel to D.C., if you feel so inclined um <laughs> we're gonna be there and we're gonna be square like yeah. it's <laughs> we're gonna you be will see us. <laughs> yeah we will be a running around like wild people yep um which will be very very fun um the th- should we share our panels? i was gonna say we should yeah. yeah so which one are you most excited about start with that one the one that i'm most excited about yeah. um I think we we shared excited uh, excitement of over the one, but I th- I'll start with like the one we usually won't we yeah. have done over the last two years. Yes, this will be our is, third time doing it. Yeah, the third annual yeah. OTP or no TP a, tor- a tournament of cosplay pairings. Yeah, pairings. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that grew from the f- last year's was bigger than first year. Correct. We were, we were in a bigger room. We had more time. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I'm really excited to see the room size the like yeah. the time they give us i'm interested to see how that will continue to evolve and i think you know we yeah. learn something every time we do it um yeah. so there's but it's, it's, there's something really exciting nice about having like oh we've done this before so now we get to innovate like right. we know what works we have a yeah. a system in place what can it be improved upon that exactly it's so fun the shtick if you haven't heard us talk about this before is that we have people we get cosplayers to come sign up Mm -hmm. and we make basically two lines and uh create pairings and they are usually pretty unhinged (laughs) because it's totally up to random chance so Mm -hmm. last year's winners were pawa and princess peach oh my god that's right the previous year's (laughs) winners were blackbeard and the joker yep (laughs) aka the like joaquin phoenix Phoenix joker Um, but we've had like Tina Belcher and like some other, it was like a an anime character or something. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the pairings are entirely randomized. So it's like truly just like whoever shows up exactly. is part of it. And we go through different rounds of like elimination. So the first round is usually just like audience vote. Like, do we like this pairing? And it's on mm. the pairing, not the co- not the quality of the cosplay, right. which we try to make really clear. So that way people don't feel bad like participating if they're mm. in sort of like a chill costume. Yeah. Because we don't want it to be like, do we like your outfit? Right. Like, it's, we, do we like how unhinged this pairing is? <laughs> exactly. Like, there's there's already like a, a bona fide like yeah. cosplay contest happening on the main floor or something. That's yeah. we're not doing that. No, that's not what it is at all. It's yeah. like, do we like this pairing or is this pairing fun? Yeah. In some way. So we do like a round of audience elimination, and then we start getting into like the mini games. Yeah. And last year we had people read fan fiction dialogue yeah, in like their pairs, micro scenes, which was really fun. It was fun. Um, we did. We make them come up with a ship name. Yeah. 
uh prom poses prom poses were pretty good and then we said at the end was uh, a surprise question was would you still love your partner if they were a worm <laughs> yep and they had to vote yes or no real fast <laughs> and then they had to explain it which is pretty dumb funny. i loved it it was so dumb but i was we were stretching time at that yeah. one they gave us too much time last time yeah it was too short the previous year and then it was too long this one and it was like yeah whatever mm-hmm. um so that's going to be our first one. And it yep. is really fun to come back and do that again. Awesome mm-hmm. Con has historically and continues to be my favorite con for us to do just as panelists because mm-hmm. they really curate their program mm-hmm. um, staff. So they have like a program staff that's actually like reachable. By yeah. email. So like we know the program coordinator. We've worked with her for years and like mm-hmm. years. Wow. That's true. But yep. wild to say. It was, it's a, yeah. Um, And, you know, we've we've worked out some of these kinks with her specifically mm-hmm. like some of it was her suggestion so right. you know that from my perspective is one of the best things about awesome con is that they really value like their program staff agreed or at yeah. least they put names to faces like yeah it just, other cons you don't really get a contact no yeah there's a personalization there that yeah. feels like it, it, it just it's nice to know that you're dealing with a human and not just like a computer which yeah. is sometimes feels like it is yeah i feel like they other cons maybe are just too overwhelmed yeah, like for they sure. maybe are too big to do it or they don't have the staff to do it but awesome con really goes out of their way to make sure that you know what you're doing mm-hmm. <laughs> which is good i feel Love like it. they should do that they they give us a lot of leeway now because i feel like they, they know, know us, us they and they can trust us. that we'll show up and do what we say we're gonna do agreed so, which is why they, literally she was like so many panels <laughs> and i was like leslie <laughs> I was like, you have no idea how excited we are. And then she sent me back a big smiley face. And oh. I was like, I bet you vouched for us. That's really nice. Oh, love her. So there's OTP or no TP. Yeah. Uh, there's also going to be I'm um, Actually Fandom Edition. Yeah. Which is Caitlin's baby. It's Caitlin's baby. The inimitable Caitlin. The inimitable Caitlin. If you've ever played a game with us, if you've ever been at a panel where we had a game component to mm-hmm. it, or if you've been on our Discord, which we also have, mm-hmm. and played any of the, during our like game nights, Caitlin made that game. Yeah. She is the master of sort of coming up with how do we do this and like Mm -hmm. what is the structure and she's really good at like asking like fandom questions and coming up with good like nitpicky questions that aren't too hard Mm -hmm. so i'm actually it's her baby and she's gonna sort of like lead the charge on it and it's really exciting it is really exciting how that pass out like you know goes along Mm -hmm. obviously we'll be there to like yeah help in whatever way she she wants yeah but but it's really her thing and it's gonna be really fun i think because we we played it on the discord and it was really fun so I don't think I can participate because I know all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, sucks to suck. Sucks to suck. I can't win this one. <laughs> Bummer. I'm so competitive. Um, Same. And then last but not least. Yep. Our favorite. Our favorite, which we brainstormed in the airport on the way back from uh, C2E2. Yep. Two, last year? Last year. Would wow. have been 2020, 2023. Wild. Yeah, which unfortunately we can't go to C2E2 E2 2024 because of scheduling issues, but we do want to go back for 2025. So yeah. C2E2, if you're listening, we're coming <laughs> back for you, baby. <laughs> we just, it, it didn't work this year, but we'll be back. Yeah. Okay. There were weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Things were happening. Things, yeah, there's yeah. too much going on that weekend. But um, do you want to say the title? I, I think you should. Okay, because I came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so our third panel is a lecture style panel it's an after hours panel mm-hmm. and it's called <laughs> into the omega verse a long hard look at smutty fan fiction <laughs> <laughs> and it's exactly what it says on the tin oh uh, yeah yeah so this was born out of the hentai panel yes that wasn't as good as we wanted it to be correct we looked at each other and we were like we can do this better we can do better we yeah absolutely can do better than this and we were like but it is really funny to do horny content <laughs> yeah absolutely because <laughs> like i don't think awesome con is a very family friendly comic con to be fair and like that's yeah. just how they've branded themselves so this year we saw that they were actively see like asking for late night content on their application page and got really excited because i thought we were gonna have to shelve this idea until 2025 which is gonna be a real bummer or just like go for it in new york yeah also a possibility but um you know so i put it in and i was like okay this is something that we've been talking about where we want to basically dive into like fanfic smut Mm -hmm. and how it intersects with like real life kink and real life like erotica and like all of that kind of stuff but then also the stuff that fanfic specifically hath wrought yeah um where it's like you know obviously the omega verse is going to factor in Mm -hmm. but there's like i think we want to talk about like the culture of fanfic smut and how like in fanfic sexuality is so normal yeah (laughs) like it's everywhere literally and it's not i was like i think people who only read published literature are sometimes like 
they, like the threshold is very different for what smut is between mm-hmm. those two things because people will be like this book is so smutty and i'll be like <laughs> what are you talking about this, uh, this pg-13 book yeah, you I was mean? Like, this is easily rated e for everyone right not e for explicit <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and so i'm interested to see how that evolves because we've talked a little bit about like what areas we want to talk about and mm-hmm. um obviously queerness will come into it and sure. sort of like um honestly like gender will come into it mm-hmm. because it's all sort of wrapped up but we're also going to try to make it as hilarious as humanly possible as unhinged as you come, yeah. have come to expect from yeah. us yeah like i feel like we're going to really lean in because i want to make it like the way that i wanted the hentai panel to go yeah where it was like joyous yeah but also like silly absolutely what but not i was like it's kind of the thing where it's like where are you talking about like how a comedian has to take it really seriously to do it right yeah you you're not funny if you don't take it seriously agreed and that's kind of how i think we're gonna plan this Mm -hmm. this thing we literally meet on saturday this upcoming saturday to like get together and plan out this panel i'm really excited yeah it's really exciting this is really fun it's gonna be fun (laughs) it's either gonna be fun or it's gonna be a disaster and frankly either way it's gonna be a good time Yeah, it'll be informative (laughs) (laughs) yeah anyway you got it it's gonna be cool we'll have a good time developing it yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun and then we do hope to bring it to new york so new york comedy you know listen. yeah, you're listening. <laughs> um and uh burke hi <laughs> we're gonna have slides for you bud yeah um but we're gonna test run it in dc and yeah then, do a know. little pilot yeah we kind of wanted to like work out the kinks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see my face but yeah. i made a fun face um <laughs> but yeah before we do it so that's our three panels awesome con dc 2024 wild this is we've have, we've never had more than one panel at any con is am correct. i right in that correct this is the first time we've ever been asked to do more than one panel at this a Comic-Con. is it's worrying but like exciting yeah it's it's a little overwhelming <laughs> i'm a little <laughs> nervous a little nervous uh I but i also think like we can handle it i yeah. think if if we had had this level of responsibility earlier oh, i don't that know that we no. would we couldn't have handled it i think we needed the experience that we've had yeah. across the different comic cons now agreed that would, like we're ready yeah it feels like a step ladder in the right direction i agree and like two of those are essentially mostly built so we're really yeah. only building one right yeah and we've done lecture style panels before yeah and frankly we are at our best when we're allowed to just sort of be idiots yeah, i agree <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just give us two microphones and a topic and we're on, off and away <laughs> exactly um but we want to make sure that it's like a tight 60 minutes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah if you want if you want a whole panel <laughs> worth of these kinds of jokes you know where to be on march 8th through 10th i think we need to start the thing with being with a set of like rules we're gonna like have rules of engagement and one of them is <laughs> If you <laughs> anytime we make a sex joke, the whole audience has to go <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna go for a collective groan, but yes. <laughs> no, I feel like anytime we use the sixty-nine, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> we can just do it. Um, and yeah, I do feel like it's gonna be in the spirit of our podcast, where it's like we're not making fun, right? Like we're having fun, yeah. we're not making fun. Agreed. Which is like the fine line to walk. Mm-hmm. And I did feel a little bit like the hentai panel like they didn't make fun per se but they right. they weren't celebrating it as much as we want to celebrate smut in our panel yeah and i think also for me specifically i, don't know, or I only spoke speak for myself i feel like i went into it was called a history of hentai or right. hentai history and i learned nothing yeah <laughs> i was like i would have wanted to walk away with like being able to tell you anything like a right. fact so that yeah. my personal goal what is the first known hentai exactly <laughs> couldn't answer that wouldn't be able to you. tell you yeah yeah but I want people to walk away at least knowing like a the dumbest fun fact about like something or just right. like to make a core connection between certain things. Yeah. Like you're gonna learn what a word means. Exactly. And that's... you're gonna learn about sounding and you're gonna like oh. it. Oh. I'm sorry I picked that one. That's the worst oh. one. <laughs> yeah, that was worse. That was bad. That's the one usually I go with water sports. <laughs> that one usually is like "Eh." but that one's been making the rounds into like tiktok comments recently Mm -hmm. of like terms i wish i didn't know yeah so true a hundred percent i'm so glad i don't have the equipment for that (laughs) not to yuck anyone's yum but it makes me cringe there's a there's a visceral reaction to the word (laughs) absolutely my whole body just went (laughs) yep (laughs) sorry i picked that one (laughs) but you know and that's the other thing too is like we are big uh we are big people on um uh kink tomato what's the your kink is not my kink and that's okay that's well i know what that means you're a youngin what <laughs> what are you what are the words coming out of your mouth you're like, are you having a stroke <laughs> um so back in the day 
uh, in conjunction with the word squick, uh-huh. you would use the abbreviation of your kink is not my kink and that's okay. Uh-huh. And that would, so it's at the end, it's M-A-T-O. So people uh, would call it kink tomato. Kink tomato. That's hysterical. Yeah. So Understood. that is a philosophy that we abide by. Yes. Which is your kink is not my kink and that's okay. Yeah. Also, it's quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that word. We're going to talk about Squick. I'm going to teach. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to make Squick happen. Stop trying to make Squick happen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have opinions about the Mean Girls movie? Yes, I saw that yesterday. I haven't seen it, but I have seen a lot of criticism on TikTok. Yeah, it's not a great movie. <laughs> You're like, it's not good. It's not a great musical, <laughs> but it's a pretty great adaptation of a musical. Fair. I saw the musical. I'm going to say a thing. I saw the musical in its original run in D.C., it's pre-Broadway. <laughs> it's pre-Broadway run. <laughs> mostly because I had season tickets that season so I could see Hamilton. Oh, yep. Um, so I saw Mean Girls by accident. Uh, just <laughs> by happenstance. By happenstance. And I didn't like it then. So, yeah. 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 It's, I, I was telling a friend, I was like, I know a couple of songs, um, but I had a really big problem with most of the others. Is I, it, lyrically, it's just really dumb. Like, it just didn't yeah. do anything for me. It's not me. a great book. No. No, 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 no. Um, and I think that the movie still suffers from a lot of that, but the way it was directed, like a lot of the choices they made to bring it into like the, you know, high school now, the Gen Z generation, it really Mm -hmm. works. Like it's really like, again, if the songs aren't like anything to like write home about or anything. And And I heard they cut the best ones. Yes. And the book is still not great. Um, but it was generally, it was a pretty good time. Like it was fine. Like it was passable. Yeah. That's fine. I'm probably not going to see it. Um, yeah. I do really enjoy all the people who are doing the comparative of the Broadway versus yeah. the sound. And it's like Katie Heron before the lobotomy <laughs> and after. And I feel really bad for the girl who like did because I don't think it's her fault. But like no, I think yeah. she probably got directed to act a certain way and yeah, it just yeah. came across real bad. Um, and like movie musicals are a really difficult line to walk mm-hmm. because film acting and stage acting are so different. Yep. But you also have to retain some of the energy of the original. Yeah. It's like what happened with Les Mis, too. Like, Les Mis wasn't good because it just, like, didn't retain it. Like, yeah. It, it just, like, didn't ring true It to didn't the have thing. the, like, epic nature of it. Right. Yeah, yeah, Despite yeah. its best efforts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But film acting is so close. That, yeah. Like, eh. It's hard, yeah. And I, so, uh, a friend, the, the friend I went to go see this with pointed out, um, and I thought it was an, a good observation, is uh, also but Katie Heron's character at the beginning of Mean Girls is also supposed to She's pretty boring. She's you know yeah. a homeschool person who has had no contact with anyone. So like, if you look at it from a perspective of character, it's like it makes sense. It's it makes sense. She's a little bland. Yeah. Um. But you know, I and yeah, I, I agree. I feel bad for the girl because she. Uh. I didn't like her at the beginning. Same problems. I was mm-hmm. like, why does it literally sound like she wants to be anywhere in the world, but but in yeah. that recording studio? But as she when she becomes like the Regina George toward spoilers mm-hmm. for anyone who hasn't seen Mean Girls. Yeah, you're about twenty years too <laughs> exactly. late. <but> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but when she becomes the Regina George character later on, she's excellent. Like she yeah. like really nails it. And I'm like, okay. So it make it does Maybe make she me was miscast. Yeah, it makes me think like miscast or like it wasn't used correctly in the direction or yeah, something yeah. was wonky there. But it is a it is really funny to see those like um comparisons between like just how high energy the Broadway recording is versus I am filled her. with cow- Calculus. She sounds dead. I'm she like, does. it's not good. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a it's not a great recording. <laughs> no. Yeah. And I don't blame her necessarily on yeah, that. That's, there were other factors. That's a direction issue. Exactly. Um and a mixing issue probably. Yeah, they the orchestrations like, are so different too, weird. which I was like, I think they I think they leaned a little more on the like Olivia Rodrigo, Billie yeah. Eilish, like softer, like more whispery tone kind of music. Which and it's weird for a musical. And it's it's hard for a Broadway musical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that the moments in which it shines is when the vocals really go, like right. when they're just like, it's a musical, those moments really shine. Mm-hmm. But it's the moments in which they're trying to like, be like, mm, musical light. There's a, there's a video essay that I'm really excited to watch. It's on my YouTube watch later <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> because I hadn't seen Mean Girls yet, but it specifically talks about like Hollywood's problem with musicals currently. Yeah. And it points out like uh, Wonka as the other one. And I, I think there's like, yeah. there's, there's a really interesting thing happening where they're just not advertising things as musicals. Why was right. it not Mean Girls the musical? And then you have this whole right. contingent of people who apparently did not realize it was a musical. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have known if I didn't know that it was a musical. But it Aaron, looks like it would a be a little, remake. There's a little eighth note on the A. Did you not see the eighth? <laughs> I wish y'all could see my face right now. Yeah. 
<laughs> because the slow blink of like sass that I yeah. just gave Alan was I felt it. It was good. I felt it in my heart. <laughs> Came from deep within. Yep. Uh yeah, no. I think the whole like if you're gonna fuck it, this episode is like off the rails. Yeah. Uh <laughs> just whatever. Who cares? Who gives a shit. We had a plan. Fuck it. Um <laughs> <laughs> the if you're gonna make a musical commit to the fucking musical exactly you know yeah. like i really don't like that they are doing these things where they're like they're kind of be like playing coy with mm -hmm. the fact that it's a musical and then you show up and you're like well fuck this like i didn't right. also i this is my hot take i'm gonna get us canceled oh i love i this. think timothy chalamet is wildly overrated yeah that's fair wildly overrated he's not particularly attractive he looks like a dying victorian child uh and like he's also like not a very good actor i don't think like he's fine like certain roles show off the kind of acting he's able to do yeah. but he doesn't have a wide range of skills agreed so like i don't i like some of the commercials that i would see of wonka made me like viscerally angry because i was like you you're not gene wilder like get the fuck out of here yes i agree no. like when they announced it and like when they like the trailer dropped and things i was telling everyone i was like he's not good he's not a good wonka no. and, everyone, and i had like a, literally one of my friends was trying to argue with me I was like oh but like he's such a good actor and i'm like sure but like wonka is in his shtick like no. wonka has to have a little madness behind the eyes and yeah. that's not something that timothy chalamet has at right. this maybe at this juncture in his career at this point no that is very much like a, an e-boy uh yeah. like keep him off in the like the sulky more like yeah uh like introspective kind of roles those are he does fine in those sure. but like he doesn't have the like zaniness i think required yeah. for something like wonka you gotta feel like wonka might kill, kill you. you yes yeah, yeah like intentionally or not unclear but like <laughs> you gotta be a little afraid for your life exactly with wonka. and that is very much a legacy of gene wilder's interpretation of that mm -hmm. i have not read the book i don't know how much of that comes from the book but roald dahl's books always have an edge of danger to them yeah always yeah yeah and Matilda's that way uh -huh. and like the witches is that way big time yeah. oh, the and witches. I feel like it is such a mistake to hire someone who's pretty in mm -hmm. that role and yeah. like that's what they're known for unless they're going to commit to being like right this is the moment where I'm going to be a little unhinged mm -hmm. you know and I I did not get the sense from the commercials that he got that and also I agree I think we're past the point where you can have Willy Wonka with like any kind of little person interaction. Did they make Hugh? They had like Hugh Grant play. They yeah, they're the Oompa Loompa. Yeah, yeah I'm like I get that that's CGI and not yeah. like a literal like person, but yeah. I do feel like we have like we've reached the point where like you kind of can't do it anymore. Yeah. And it wasn't cool the first time we did it. And, like we've grown past that, you yeah. know. Like it's just sort of odd. Like it's an odd story to resurrect. Yeah. You don't need to. I agree. There was no need to, to do that. No. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid they're coming for, like, Wizard of Oz next. Oh, you know? probably. Well, I mean, they've tried. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you think that Wicked movie is ever going to happen? Hasn't that been, like, it, talked In production about? for forever, yeah. yeah it, well, they've shot the now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I imagine that... I think it's Cynthia meant... Cynthia Reeve was in that, so I'm going to see it just oh, for absolutely. Cynthia Reeve. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, Jonathan Bailey. Um... Yeah. They got actual Broadway people. Yeah. Other than Aria yeah, Grande. <laughs> which whatever we will see how she does <laughs> yeah, not exactly the christian jenna with type but maybe yeah i agree i agree and the, I, I can go on a whole tangent i won't but like i think that the first part of the wicked movies comes out this holiday this coming december it's multiple parts too i'm not seeing it yeah <laughs> i'm immediately not I, into it i was livid i was i was like literally pacing my apartment screaming basically no. i was like this is the stupidest fucking shit i've ever heard the musical is like a two and a half hour experience you're gonna you're gonna tell me you're not gonna be able to put two and a half hours into a movie right. what are you doing what are you right. doing to it like yeah. i would watch two hours and 45 minutes of it if that right. is what it takes like look at the waitress like film right. thing that, that was nearly three hours i sat through that four times and enjoyed the hell out of it my hot take is that they should absolutely just be doing professional productions of like yeah. professional filmings of Broadway shows. And once they are off their Broadway run, or mm -hmm. even while they're still on it as like an advertising thing, they should be showing that in theaters. Agreed. There's this weird, oh my God, this, this episode. <laughs> this episode <laughs> right, should we just talk. do a theater podcast? Um, <laughs> right. So my my sort of final say on the matter is like there's a lot of theater elitism and yeah. sort of like weird gatekeeping of theater where it's like well if you're not in the room like that's where the magic happens oh, shut yeah. the fuck up that's stupid like it's so stupid and there's this so, the commitment to like theater is ephemeral and like that's what it is and yeah. i'm like it's fucking shrek or the musical right. you know like let's <laughs> let's back down a little bit this is not mm -hmm. some brechtian like exactly. thing with five people in the room nor like the art can run, run the gamut mm -hmm. the stuff that is meant to be commercial let it be commercial and yep. give people the access to it agreed because like if there's one thing 
thing that we've learned is that like we're gonna bootleg it anyway exactly so you may as well like honestly make it a really high quality production mm-hmm. and then put it like subject to all the union protections and let people make money off of it and, like do that thing like exactly fucking fine lean into the commercial aspect of it right. just do it and like give us give the people what they want exactly <laughs> they're doing it with opera in a really interesting way oh yeah was, with, like, like the met production exactly and i was like that is a that is a methodology that you can follow here that exactly. like people would love i'm sure people would love to see mean girls on broadway mm-hmm. in its original form yep apex predator fucking slapped yeah oh <laughs> it's a good it. one that's one it's of the good great ones. song yeah and like i don't think i haven't seen the movie i assume it's not as good in the movie <laughs> it helps up all right yeah, it's i one love of the good ones. apex predator okay then you, should, you will not like it it's one. the bop yeah it, oh it's really good yeah that's yeah. the only song i remember frankly from the show so yeah. i was like oh it's the yeah it's the it's like the pseudo villain song but it's like not <laughs> my other hot take about mean girls is that all of them are villains yeah yeah but i don't think that's a particularly hot take that's hot <laughs> in the way that like keith's hot sauce is hot <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's not hot <laughs> Hi, Keith. It, it, it was, you know, at, at the beginning. And then it mellows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's got a little bit of cayenne in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. A zing. A little zing. Wow. <laughs> we're, we're now at an hour. Well, what's next on the outline? <laughs> it wasn't Mean Girls, let me tell you. <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> you know, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> who cares? Um, What I do have next is fandom end of year questions. Which might lean into another hour of just random discussions. Yeah. I wrote 10 of them. Choose your favorite and we'll start <laughs> there. <laughs> and we'll see how long All that right. takes us. Pick a number, one through 10. Seven. Seven. Uh, is there a work in progress that you're reading that you hope gets updated next year? No. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Moving on. What about you? Uh, probably. <laughs> um. There's one that I think might be dead forever, but there was a steady fic that I was that was really into that was oh, really no. exciting. And it was one of those things where like the author's note was like, I have, you know, I have all this stuff planned out and I'm looking at posting like two times a week. Mm. And I was like, I think I've seen this all before <laughs> and I didn't like the ending. Yep. And inevitably they burned out yeah, of um, course. and haven't posted in many years. It was called Sticky Notes. And the conceit or the initial mm-hmm. sort of concept is that Steve, because of the number of times that he has been hit in the head, this is Stranger Things, Steve Harrington, the number of times that he's been hit in the head, he basically has um, trauma-induced hearing loss. Oh, and no. And he goes mostly deaf. Oh, boy. Um, he can sort of hear some some noises, mostly he can pick up on vibrations. So mm. he ends up going to one of Eddie's metal shows uh, because it's the only music he can hear. Oh. And he, like eddie at the first is like what are you doing here this is weird like it, i think it kind of presumes that like they've kind of gone their separate ways mm-hmm. after whatever um but eddie figures out what's going on and uh they start communicating via sticky notes <sighs> and it's fucking adorable really cute and it's a really well done like dustin it picks up a book at the library and learns Aww. asl so he can like teach steve asl adorable. and like robin helps out at work because he's still working but like mm-hmm. And there's like a whole thing like they really did the research i think on like what that. deaf culture was like in the 80s and it was really cool so if that updates i would be very very glad because i loved that fic. if the author of sticky notes is listening to this <laughs> yeah. episode yeah. uh please know that uh aaron would really love an update I would love an update but send, send her your, your outline only on your time <laughs> yeah. it's fine like i understand that story looked like it was kind of a beast to write because yeah. it was a lot it, right. but it was really well done yeah and if it, and it was all that research went into it then yeah it must have been really time consuming yeah but even as it stands as a work in progress, I go back and reread it sometimes just because it was so good. Like, especially the the first, like, five chapters were just so different. Such a breath of, breath of fresh air. And, I love yeah, that. Really good. Pick another number. Three. Three. Uh, what was the best TV show you watched this year? Oh, man. <laughs> what a great question. 2023. We're talking about 2023. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are talking about 2023. Why don't you start? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Uh, let's see. The best TV show. Part of my problem is that I have a tendency to watch um, what my mother refers to as grow a brain TV, which is mostly documentaries and like nature stuff and whatever. So I don't watch a lot of fictionalized serialized tv shows and the stuff that i do tends to be rewatches of stuff that i've already seen i'm rewatching call the midwife right now oh fun it's been really fun it's been a long time since i watched it i was like oh yeah there was a whole character that like left in season three i was like <laughs> she's the main character and she's left she's the one who wrote the book 
Wow. I forgot that you existed, Jenny Lee, but okay. Hysterical. Um, I think a lot of shows let me down in 2020. <laughs> oh, bummer. It wasn't bad. I just didn't love our flag means death season two mm. as much as i wanted to it was fine it was just rushed it wasn't bad it just wasn't what i wanted yeah same thing with heartstopper too actually um it was yeah. good but it wasn't great yeah it, it didn't like i haven't even rewatched season two to give you like yeah. context i'm like i rewatched season one like yeah 10 times or something like that week it came out i yeah. watched it a bunch yeah yeah, yeah. There, there was something about the and maybe it's like the it's like they're getting into like for like you know heavier topics and like maybe yeah. part of the allure was just like this journey of self-discovery that when it was just the two of them i feel like now it's like it's so spread out amongst the friend group which yeah. is great and i love them but it it, it lost something like there's a little yeah. of that magic that was not quite present it has um in between syndrome yeah we're in between like major story points mm -hmm. and because it has to get from one place to another mm -hmm. you're watching it go in between yeah but it's not interesting on its own yeah oh i had oh have you did you see are you do you watch good omens no oh okay i had that problem with good omen season two yeah and i think that was a pretty universal experience for a lot of us i think a lot of people were not like good omen season one is just so good yeah and season two was fine yeah <laughs> like gee thanks for yeah. season two like it's better than nothing but is it yeah um i always feel like this the first time i remember having this feeling about this in between space mm -hmm. with sequels that are definitely leading into a third thing was the pirates of the caribbean series because <laughs> if you watch pirates of the caribbean one it stands alone it's a, a cultural icon uh -huh. the queen yep. uh pirates of the caribbean two not great <laughs> pirates of the caribbean three great <laughs> like but two had to happen for you to get, you get to, three. to three yeah and that's why it's like that it's that in between it's like the bridge and yeah. it doesn't really hold up on its own because yeah. it's really building to something else and that i think a little like heartstopper wasn't terrible mm -hmm. it wasn't really bad there were still yeah. moments of like it was good yeah but i feel like it's so obviously building to what we know happens with charlie mm -hmm. and what we know like is coming yeah. that like you're just kind of waiting for a thing that never happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't stand on its own two feet. Yeah, I feel that. I, I would agree with that. And they know that they have a third season, so it's that's totally yeah. fine. Like A fact we did not know for <laughs> Good Omens, but now we do. Thank God. Yeah, and our flag just got canceled. I saw. I'm which is sorry. Yeah. I made, it's okay. I went to rewatch. I, I might have mentioned this already. I went to rewatch season one. Because um, I was like, I need to brush up on this again. And then uh, so I can watch season two. And I got through the first two episodes, I think, and I was like, I think I just have to accept that I'm not a pirate girly. Like, I just, <laughs> it's just, it does nothing for me. It doesn't swash yeah. your buckles? No, my buckles unswashed. Unswashed. <laughs> <laughs> Real bummer. Yeah, so I did not watch season two. I do feel like looking back season one, I, it's a really great first watch. Yeah. And then you watch it again, you're kind of like, meh. Mm. It's better when you don't know what's coming. Fair in a lot of ways but i do i think the back half is, is stronger than is stronger, the first one for yeah, sure yeah. it takes a little while to like get into it yeah season two was fine i like it wasn't bad i just felt like the pacing was a little funky yeah. like they were trying to do too much in the amount of time that the they axe had. was coming i think that had a sense yeah i think they wanted to reach a point of conclusion that if they did get cut it wouldn't be the end it of the world satisfying but they left certain things open for but you're making a face like sorry finish some, your thought something happened and just that they i think they were leave, trying to leave themselves open in case they did get a third season but they yeah. had an idea that they might not so they put it in a place that it wouldn't be a cliffhanger i love that yeah that makes sense it better to have a rushed ending than no or like rushed um conclusion than no conclusion yeah. <laughs> well we're different people too like you 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 live in the world of uh wips so true and i so true do bestie. Not. don't even touch them <laughs> yeah i live in wips and also like fanfic will end it it's fine yep that, that's so true <laughs> fanfic will figure it out yeah. <laughs> yeah um i don't know if it's like the best show i saw last year i would still like to give that a little more thought mm -hmm. but i just remembered a show i recently watched that i was like oh i know i have to talk to aaron about this and i'm so glad i remembered on this moment I recently watched Gallivant <gasps> for the first time ever. <laughs> Back, the the scream I scrumped. <laughs> the gasp I gusped. I fucking love Gallivant. Oh, man. What a journey. <laughs> 
I, all right, we're going to talk about this for three hours. <laughs> Hello, the Fick List 2024 Unwrapped is now a three-hour <laughs> special. Of the Galavan <laughs> recap. Yeah, okay, please tell me about your thoughts on Galavan. I loved it. Oh, my God. Good. It was so fun. And like, Talk about a musical that is a fucking exactly, musical. That knew it was a musical. Yeah. And it was just so fun and ridiculous. Yeah. And, oh, man. And uh, the, the second season totally unhinged. They were like... How did I love that they started with a musical number in which they were like, how did we get another season? Yeah. Here we, we go. <laughs> we literally didn't think we were going to get a season two. Um, so do you know the backstory on that? No. They were saved by one exec. Shut up. Really? Yeah. One guy at ABC was like, I fucking love this show. Yes. We got a green light for them for a second season. They were like, no. And he was like, I will stand on this hill. Yes. I will die on this hill that we get Galavan a second one. And then he left. <laughs> so they didn't get renewed for a third season. Devastating. He's at like Disney Plus now or whatever. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I was like, I maintain that Galavant would be a killer streaming oh, show. Oh, 100%. If they could make that show now, it would have like seven seasons. I was about to say, it's like, I think that that show was just ahead of its time. It was absolutely ahead of its time. Because like, th that kind of humor is hysterical today. It and should have been have an Apple Plus them. series. Yeah. It absolutely, like, it or like a Max yeah. series. Like, it should have been a like series that was like on streaming dropped all at once and you like binged it because yeah, like yeah. that is absolutely i fucking love that i've never laughed as hard as the I've <laughs> scene <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm laughing about it now when he has to he's like so the theory the thing is Calavan has been like off his game for a while because mm -hmm. he gets dumped by madalena um and he like, just goes and drinks and whatever so he's out of shape and then uh, the princess comes and is like, I have to, you have to go on a quest or whatever. So he's trying to go on this quest. He's trying to like get back in shape, <laughs> in shape <laughs> for a job. <laughs> and they do this whole training montage. I'm crying. <laughs> and <laughs> they, he's like sword fighting. And he's like, look, look awesome. And it's like the real, like they really <laughs> lean into it. It's like very much like an action movie where he's like, yeah, I'm back in. And then he shows up on the horse the next day <laughs> in his armor and he can't move. Because <laughs> he's so sore. And, he goes, and she's like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I can't move. And she's like, what? And he's like, this is my whole range of motion. <laughs> and moves his arm like an inch. She's like, that's it. I got nothing else. And she's like, what? how did you sleep? He goes, I slept on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That was fucking hysterical. I think that was my favorite episode. I laughed forever. <laughs> it makes me laugh just thinking about it. And then John Stamos plays the opposing oh, knight. Yes. And the princess had gotten him drunk on absinthe. <laughs> To be like, uh, you know, to try to like rig the game yep. so that way uh, Gal Galvin, Galvin would, would win. win. And <laughs> John Stamos stumbles out of the tent. <laughs> he vomits through oh, his helmet. Yeah. Oh. And it's neon green. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. And it's like <laughs> the first man who can stand up wins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Galavant wins by default. Oh. oh, yep. God, I love Galavant. It was so fucking good. Please bring that show back. Yeah, seriously. That's ripe for. Oh my God. I can imagine like a reboot oh, opening number. Love, Hysterical. Love to see that show continue. Yeah. Um, Timothy Oldmanson, who played. King uh, Richard mm -hmm. unfortunately had a stroke <gasps> in the intervening time. He's fine now. Oh well, that's good. He is, you know, as far as as far as he's talked about publicly, he sure. is, you know, he's like I'm permanently disabled from my stroke, but I am alive and well and like wow, doing good. the best I can. And he has said because people have asked, obviously, is Galavant right. ever coming back? And he's like, I can't do Galavant the way that I did it before. He's yeah. like, I can't dance the way I danced then. I don't have the the physical for it and i was like i would do i would do anything to have Galavant come back and i think they could easily write in something about king richard and like yeah. shift i was like he was not the main focus of like yeah they were setting the up for a anyway. different yeah they were setting we finished his story they were setting yeah. up a different direction he has a fucking dragon yeah oh my god tad cooper i believe in you tad cooper, tad cooper! i believe in you tad cooper um i got a t-shirt from mary that says i believe in you tad that's cooper. incredible we watched that show together in college oh and my god she makes fun of me because she's like i've never seen you laugh as hard as during that show <laughs> Last episode, and it's so Case true. Case in point, the last five minutes. I can't minutes. help it. It's so fucking... It's hysterical. The, the best episode, truly. <laughs> I 
I think I slept on the horse. I say I quote that to myself a lot when I'm like having a really hard time. I've horse. gone too hard. I slept on the horse. <laughs> no one knows what I'm talking about. Now you know. I love it. Yeah. I, that one day I'll send a new Galavan fan fiction. There's like eight of them. Oh, I bet so. I was thinking bummer. about that. I was like, I can't. Oh, only eight? Yeah, there's. An, it's not a big fandom. <sighs> That's a shame. I was really looking forward to digging into that. It was ahead of its time. <sighs> That's a there's shame. There's some. Yeah. It's not a lot. Yeah. A, a, a shame. That's amazing. That is the best TV show you could ever possibly watch. <laughs> I love that. Um, I can't top that. Let's pick a different one. Great. Uh, pick another number. Um, let's say uh, four. Uh, did you accomplish any fandom firsts this year? If so, what were they? Fandom firsts. What would be some examples of no those? No idea. I stole this question from a list on Tumblr. I love it. Okay. <laughs> fandom firsts. Well... I we got through Sansuk, which we did first million word fic or whatever. Yeah, it was a uh, a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it and I, I, you know, I feel like I and I, 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 I was pretty vocal during our episode on that. Go back a couple if you want to see. You want to hear that? Talk um, about a three hour episode. Yeah, it was fun. Hi, Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. Um, I watched the Lord of the Rings in preparation for that. Mm. Um, and that I, I ended up really enjoying. I again think like. I just had been trying to watch it before my yeah. time and then finally hit it and I'm like, okay, yeah. now I'm ready to like intake what they're trying to sell me. Yeah. And it was good. I, I really enjoyed to it. receiving the message of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly. The Lord parentheses <laughs> of the rings. <laughs> I also just feel like I, the amount, I, it was like, it literally felt like I was toiling away. Like there was an, uh, uh, an encyclopedia open to my left that I had to keep, like every time I had to open a new tab to be like, what fucking character yeah. are they talking about now? That's why I can't get into it. Yeah. No, I, it's, fully relate yeah i like i don't think i could ever read the books but like the the fanfic was good like <laughs> yeah yeah the fanfic I, was great <laughs> yeah i loved the fanfic and that's about my the extent of my yeah. engagement with it so my fandom first there is like the lord of the rings fandom as a whole right. and also it was just the longest fic i'd ever read agreed mm -hmm. i posted my first fan fiction to ao3 <laughs> congratulations you <laughs> stupid whore <laughs> It's dumb whore. You dumb, you dumb whore. whore. But I also think that was 2022. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in that information. <laughs> A year end recap of Whatever. 2023. Not interested. <laughs> Fair enough. Get out of here with your facts. <laughs> uh that's the only fandom first i've had in a long time yeah you know what i think and that's fair you are I part hope. of the fandom elite i think uh, no i'm fandom middle-aged you just have so much knowledge yeah yeah I, my brain's rotten is what you're trying to say no. <laughs> i just feel like in a in like a quest a la gallivant you would be they would be sent to like an oracle and it'd be you i'm the oracle yeah. at io3 <laughs> yeah that's pretty good i feel like caitlin has more knowledge than i do well i think our our knowledges don't overlap is right. the thing we have it, in a venn diagram we mm. both cover a large amount of fandom oh 100 percent. and there's like an overlap there but she also has like a whole realm of expertise yeah. that i don't and then i have the opposite because i have all the bandom stuff it, it, yeah that so, she was never a part so of. so it's it's like it's quite literally like in greek mythology or in ancient greece it was like they had oracles at delphi and multiple oracles, of oracles. Here. multiple oracles <laughs> i feel less special now oh, well, only one of many oracles and i want you to know that that was your doing <laughs> you, <brought Caitlin. laughs> you made yourself sad you, you brought caitlin into it i was just giving you a little yeah. little title and you're like well actually <laughs> you're the one that overthought it <laughs> <laughs> no. wow things that i do all the time overthought it made myself sad uh yeah i don't know that i had any other fandom first this year very fair First time going to New York Comic Con. Yeah, that was freaking Certainly exciting. The biggest Comic Con that I've ever been to. Yeah, overwhelming. Um, very overwhelming. But I got loop earplugs for my birthday this year, oh. which I'm very excited about. Loop ear earplugs. Have you seen them? They're the little earplugs that are like metal circles, and oh. what they do is like they maintain fidelity of sound while dampening things. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, they're they've made a huge splash as like an except like a accommodation thing for people who get overstimulated. Oh, I love that. Um, so I asked for them for all the because I'm going to like eight concerts this year. <laughs> <laughs> Different co conversation. Yep. But I know for a fact I'm seeing Fall Out Boy and Jimmy World in an arena, like an indoor arena. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, my ears will bleed. Yeah. That's I've done that before. I've seen Jimmy World in a hockey arena before with Paramore, and like it was the most pain I've ever been in um, coming out of a concert. So I was like, I don't want to do that again. No. But those loop earplugs, man, they're really, really good. Oh, so good. Maybe next year I'll probably bring them for next year for Comic Con, just yeah. so I can kind of like live in my own head a little bit. 
because it was just too much. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot. We, a lot you and I there. skipped a day, didn't we? Yeah. The, the we Sunday, bailed. we were just like, can't do it. Like, yeah. and, we, and we fully walked in there being like, all right, let's, we'll go around the, the sales floor once. And then it was just like, nope. We left. We got yeah. back on the ferry and went home. Yeah. Oh, it was a Saturday because we walked, we left sad Sunday morning. Oh, that's what it was. But it was the busiest day and we were both pretty yeah. cognizant and I'm like, we can't do mm-hmm. the busiest day at New York Comic Con. Yeah. I won't. I, I will absolutely go again, but yeah. I will not. I will not do any of. I will like minimize my time on Saturday. I yeah, I it agree. Was too much. It's good to know our limits. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. I agree. Given all the other times at Comic Con, like two minutes in, I'm like, <laughs> that's too much. All right, pick another number. Um, one. Did you join any new fandoms this year? If so, which ones? Um, Galavant. Um, <laughs> I'm, that is like the best. <laughs> Talk about gifts. That is a gift. You your eyes lit up. You I were love... like energized. Do you know who's also gonna love that? Is my oh my also loves galavant it's one of the things we bonded over early as friends was our shared love of this oh man show. amazing i'm show. so glad <laughs> I love it's so good i think about also the i'm they missed an opportunity i think in the second season fuck it, galavant um <laughs> in the second season they go they end up at a bar in the woods that turns out to be a gay bar in the magical oh, forest yep they should have had a drag queen yeah oh uh, ahead of its time that absolutely should have been a drag queen yeah agreed yeah but they had what's her name um kylie minogue yes um and then her and the guy who played galavan dated for a while after that and they were engaged and their engagement fell apart and i don't know any of the tea i just remember being like isn't he like 30 (laughs) (laughs) isn't there like a significant age gap and there was maybe why it fell apart yeah probably (laughs) who's to say who's to say but you can kind of tell that he's like flexing in that he's like showing off for her oh it was was real which is really funny that is really funny yeah yeah. anyway what about you any new fandoms this year new fandoms not dug into old fandoms yeah um i've gotten back into reading reader (laughs) self-insert i love that for you i posted about it on tiktok and people were like i mourn for you and i'm like shut the fuck up (laughs) no it's a great thing that's what we're basically all doing to a degree you're not better than me yeah (laughs) (laughs) stop it uh no i'm not really in any new fandoms uh a lot of the fandoms that i was in had new content which was helpful oh that's great yeah but no i can't think of any new fandoms that i'm in that's fair nothing nothing gripped us this year nope these are great <laughs> questions. The answer has been no to most of them. Pick another one. Ten. What do you look forward to for the fic list in 2024? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I'm really looking forward to do, doing a uh, season as usual. Um, you know, I'm l- looking forward to reading more fanfic. I think that's yeah. also part of the reason that maybe these questions are not like. Yeah. Um, Hitting is not the right word, but like they aren't they're harder to answer they're harder to answer because we just i didn't do as much exploration as i would on a normal year you know i just yeah i didn't read that much fanfic fair well for the readers at home we were going to do an entirely different setup <laughs> we were going to use the bot hermione ao3 yeah. wrapped and uh it didn't work so <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is plan b yeah, yeah, yeah but even then i uh, mine worked but it was like three things it was um, like naruto <laughs> yeah it <laughs> didn't it wouldn't it couldn't pull mine yeah i wonder why it was a server error <laughs> i broke it <laughs> It was like, no, girl. In a girly, uh, nope. We're talking about millions of words of fanfic. We can't process that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to do to, to do some uh, episodes that are just like us reading again. And yeah, I'm um, excited for, yeah, for like the con stuff. I think that that's really yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I don't know. I felt like it was a kind, it was a bummer that we weren't able to do you know business as usual last this past season Mm -hmm. but at the same time it was really nice to feel like but also we can like the fic list is not just about us reading fanfic like it survives on so many other things like topics on fandom and like um talking about moments in time and about community and like i just i i think it's really cool i really really Mm -hmm. liked that there was um that there, there's a sense of like oh we can innovate and we can yeah. like make things different and um and still be us yeah so i'm, I'm excited to keep exploring that and like not necessarily saying like oh we're going to change everything or like oh we're going to introduce new formatting or anything but yeah it's just the the po- i'm excited about the possibility of yeah. being there i do think it was an opportunity to shake loose of the restrictiveness yeah. of the format a little bit and try some stuff I really like that we stood our ground on our values. I, I think yeah. it, there's something that has been very important since the beginning between the two of us. And we are both stubborn in that way. Mm-hmm. We're like, we hold certain things to be 
sort of like foundational to Mm -hmm. who we are and what the podcast is and we have been able to hold tight to those Mm -hmm. even as we grow and change which i think is really important and i think this is one of those things that could have really tested that and Mm -hmm. we could have been like well are we going to compromise our values to like do the thing because there's like potential gain in that Mm -hmm. and both of us looked at each other we're like fuck no (laughs) (laughs) absolutely not we're gonna stand on for what's right here and I think I am very grateful that it's you I'm doing this with. Yeah, Because, <laughs> like, I think the other thing that really, really stands out for me about this season is that our friendship got a chance to shine. Yeah. And, like, I think one of the things that people like or that have people have said that they like about this podcast is that we're genuinely friends. <laughs> we, we enjoy each other's company. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you watch a TV show and I'm like, remember that scene <laughs> where he vomited out of his helmet? Wasn't that funny? Oh. Um, oh. But, like, I actually like you as a person. <laughs> and it was really nice to, like, actually just get to talk to you as a yeah. person and have, like, some, like, give a little bit more space to just be our goofy little selves. Yeah. Even if we had, like, an outlet line it wasn't as structured so it, we like we would meander mm-hmm. and talk about whatever the fuck we want for an hour and a half <laughs> exactly on a mean girls tangent <laughs> you know and like i think that has been a really valuable thing where like yeah i like that but also people have said that that is something that they like about the podcast yeah that it's like very clearly that we actually <laughs> like each other <laughs> which we do <laughs> yeah a hundred percent oh that's so sweet and totally rep- totally mutual oh yeah. thanks that's good that would have been bad yeah you were like actually i really dislike Ooh. you as a person <laughs> yeah Ooh. this year has taught me i need a little less time with you <laughs> unfollow <laughs> <No>. <laughs> block <laughs> unsubscribe uh yeah there are a couple of other i was gonna say do you want to pick a number yeah let's do so number nine is what was your favorite fickless moment of 2023 which oh. i feel like was a question that could have preceded the f- whatever you didn't know what the numbers were you asked me to pick a number i, I did. picked a number i did you followed the instructions very very well it's my own fault <laughs> oh <laughs> i gotta think about this yeah i'm like my favorite moment do you have your answer off the no. top of your head? Okay. I just like, no. I don't want to feel like I'm holding this up. I can think of a couple of yeah. moments that were really fun. I feel like C2E2 was a real highlight for me. Oh, man. I loved C2E2. C2E2 was so fun. Yeah. It was just a, a good time. Yeah. Fully. That was probably the most fun I've ever had at a con. Yeah. And just like as people, mm-hmm. like dicking around, doing yeah. what we wanted. Um, I'm also very, very grateful for having met people in real life this year yeah that was really lovely that was super fun we've yeah. met um elisa obviously mm. we have met marissa yeah it was like oh we, man we chat a lot me i marissa. loved meeting marissa in real you life you really need to go on her podcast <laughs> yes i do <laughs> you need to email her oh God. i keep saying i'll remind you and then i forget to remind you Oops. Oh, geez. um but you should because she yes. wants to be on there and then um meeting burke obviously yeah i we had met burke before and like worked with Burke but this was the first time that we were like were in person with mm-hmm. Burke before and doing really a collaborative thing and I feel like again it could podcasting can feel very like yelling into the void mm-hmm. um and very separate and again not that I don't like working with you at all but it's, it <laughs> always brings a little bit of a different dynamic when there's other people around yeah and it feels like we've managed to sort of find a lot of the good ones which Agreed. feels really special and you know doing the discord and like even just sort of like hanging out with people on discord for like a game night mm. i was like y'all are fucking cool man uh, one I person was on discord while they were working in their shop that they work in they were like making stuff and i was like Whoa. i want to know what you're making also is that safe <laughs> should <laughs> yeah. you be like playing games with us while like she was just like it's fine <laughs> and i was like okay but um she's like i'm really just listening i'm not really participating i was like great fair enough um safety was upheld Good. but it, like people just have really gravitated yeah. in a very cool way and i, I love that. again to like stand on our values i think it's clear that like we've curated a space where certain mm-hmm. values are shared and important and i do really value that yeah i hope it continues wow beautifully yeah. said that's why i don't want any more tiktok followers than we currently have <laughs> i don't want to get any more famous than we currently are <laughs> that's why we're locking the tiktok no more new followers <laughs> no, you can have new followers it's just like i want to keep this level of good because you there's a tipping point yeah and i don't want to hit it i'm real happy here mm-hmm. we're on the titanic before the iceberg no i don't no, want to hit the iceberg we're not on the titanic we're gonna swoop around the iceberg <laughs> yeah well, you? um 
Yeah, I agree with all of that. I think the moments that stand out to me are like mostly New York based because it was mm-hmm. the most recent. But I think of like when we went to get dim sum. That yeah. I'd never had dim sum before, <gasps> so that was like a really fun. I love getting to do new things and then to yeah. do it with people that I really love is really yeah. excellent. Um, going to the diner in the rain was really fun. Oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, the bo- I, the the ferry <laughs> it was on my first yeah. boat. That was excellent. That was your first boat. Yes. Oh, you've told me this. I did tell you that. But I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I mean, you know. It was a 10-minute ferry ride, so I can't be like, oh, I was on a ship. (laughs) I was a pirate. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's why you don't swashbuckle. Yeah, I've never been out in the open sea. And honestly... I've never been swashed. (laughs) (laughs) No desire to, to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, But yeah, those are like... Those are the moments I really like. I liked... um, And also like really enjoyed the hotel room at new york like i enjoyed yeah. like i watch a horror movie every, every night in that october was so fun and you yeah I, we watched just like you old classic universal classic movies. movies yeah that was just a great time of uh, fucking talking shit about the bats and like the bat yeah. production I'm like oh man look at that 30s invisible man where yeah. i was like you're a fucking asshole yeah. <laughs> Yep. Fuck this guy. Oh, fuck that guy. Yeah. Yep. I was like, aside from being invisible, he's also just a giant dick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. What an ass. I, I I'm think... not afraid of you. I want to kick you in the nads. <laughs> so those are the moments like to me come to mind where I'm like, I really enjoy like feeling like the you know just spending time together with other yeah. people and like yeah, all of the things that you said about community and all the stuff which we felt really strongly thankfully um, at C2E2 at AwesomeCon yeah. Con and at New York Comic Con last year. Um, it's always super touching and heartwarming and humbling to be in front of people and have yeah. them respond positively to you know our thoughts and our beliefs and uh it's just yeah it it, it was a hard year it was, it was uh, hard but it was worth it yeah i agree we maybe did too much <laughs> yeah oh yes <laughs> we did too many things um i think fan expo boston was the tipping point <laughs> um yeah. but even like you guys coming to like my childhood house was really fun that was delightful that was so fun i think about you guys eating oysters with my mom oh man i loved time. that night that it was, was so, so fun. fun it was a great time yeah my, my one of my favorite moments of that is we were walking back to the car <laughs> and we see a clock tower off in the distance and caitlin's like what is that and your mom's like i don't know clock tower it's a clock <laughs> yeah, just like quite literally <laughs> like she literally went, it's a clock it's a clock and Kate was like, oh, no. Oh, oh okay. Never great. mind. <laughs> and I was like, we don't know what that is. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. It's a clock, dude. Oh, man. Oh, so funny. It was so funny. It was a great time. <laughs> that was so good. I can't believe we got Caitlin to eat an oyster. Oh, that's right. She famously does not like fish. Does not enjoy seafood. Yeah, no. of any kind. No, it was just really fun. Yeah. We, like, as difficult as it was and as expensive as it was, yeah. it was very fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good year. And I guess, like, I think that 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 experience and we take it as just like a you know microcosm it's like that is i feel like what works so well about the ficklist about our friendship and mm-hmm. our friendship with caitlin and all of our friends is like we are able to take like all of the stressful parts of like we were there for fan expo and that was a shit show <laughs> that was yeah. a really bad experience and then i got covid oh yes and you got covid from mm-hmm. it. it was just like the thing we were there for bad but Disaster. we exactly but we still like had a good time like we were able to like just chill and vibe and enjoy each other's company and like that is like you know we make the best out of a bad situation and i love that because like life doesn't ever go the way you plan it um but all you can do is make sure that you surround yourself with people that you love and that you care about and that you enjoy spending time with and then it all works out anyway yeah and like it wasn't that bad it was fine sure (laughs) <laughs> it's a middle school tech heck- schoolers heckle us it's fine oh man it was not a good time but no. like you know i met rachel maxi so that's all that matters <laughs> yeah fair yeah <laughs> that was very fun yeah we won't be going back to fan expo no, sorry guys alas. sorry boston <laughs> fan expo was like and philly was a disaster oh that's too, right but you didn't go to philly i didn't go to philly uh we got into philly as panelists and then didn't go as panelists we went as attendees yeah and then had the worst time <sighs> well so we had a good time because we met it was the first time I met Mai and Kate, and that was, like, a very wonderful experience um, because they're people that I've been interacting with online. So, like, that part of it was fun. But then, like, Joseph Quinn canceled a bunch of stuff, and, like, we wound yeah. up sitting on a floor for five hours. Like, it was not fun. Right. Like, there were parts of that that were very brutal. And, like, Fan Expo in general just has not been a good experience for yeah. us as panelists. Um, but, I mean, that doesn't mean we don't didn't make the best out of it and still have a good time mm-hmm. anyway. We just probably won't be back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not until some things change noticeably. Yeah. <laughs> Namely the way that's run. <laughs> yeah. 
We've been recording a hot suck. A minute, an hour, a minute 40. <laughs> an hour 40. Yeah. Uh, That's not terrible. No, not at all. Good I just mean us. like, we, <laughs> do you want to maybe choose like one more question to send us on our way or yeah. do you want to work your way through? I think we might have four Yeah, left. the other questions are all more general questions. Yeah. It's like, what's the best movie you've seen? Like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I feel like the wrap up questions we've already just done. Yeah. Uh, what fandoms do you want to explore in the new season? Um, I don't want to tell you because you're going to steal from me. <laughs> all right. Well, fuck you <laughs> too. <joking>. Um, <laughs> Caliban. <laughs> well, yeah, all eight of them apparently. Yeah. Um, if, I, if our listeners are listening, which you would be because that's the definition of a listener. Um, <laughs> and you write, please write Caliban <laughs> and then please send it to me. Please do. So you can talk about it. Yeah. Specifically about the joust episode. The joust. <laughs> there she goes again <laughs> it's just so stupid i slept on the horse i slept on the horse <laughs> 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 it was the best physical acting i've ever seen <laughs> like i had to, it's one of the only times i've ever had to pause a tv show because i was laughing so hard that i knew i was gonna miss like 20 <laughs> minutes of it and mary laughed at me laughing she Amazing. was like, that's not that funny. And I was like, it's fucking hilarious. That is comedy gold. <laughs> <laughs> comedy gold. <laughs> also, the narrator in that show. Oh, um, yes. The jester. The jester. Loved it. The slutty, slutty jester. Oh, I love the slutty jester. He's the best. Yeah. My, one of my, my one critique, maybe not my one critique, but there's a few, but I mean like one of the biggest critiques I had for season two, the ending, I really disliked that we ended, that the last song was out, Weird Al's. Yeah, it was a little weird. Yeah, I was like, they should have swapped the order between him and um, the gesture. And I think maybe, you know, they were trying to capitalize on the big name for the big finale, but Probably. I'm like, the gesture has been with us literally every episode. It should have right. been his song to wrap yeah, it, it up. Yeah, it should have had an ending. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I didn't love, so I didn't love the way that season two ended. Yeah. In general. But I, they were, they were trying again, clearly to try to give themselves a place where it could end. Yeah. But then also they left themselves open to the possibility of something more, of yeah. something in the future. We can't go down this path yeah. about Galavan again. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, any fandoms? Fandoms, fandoms. Oh, what yeah. I, ju- I literally, th- before coming here, the last thing I did at my home before coming here was I finished season one of The Bear. Oh. Yeah. Hello. I need to watch that. I'm a good time. I'm really enjoying it. Would not say it's a comedy. No, that's what I keep hearing. Yeah. It's it, like, why is this in the comedy section? It's really good. But yeah, not a comedy. No. Yeah. yeah. But, it doesn't seem like one. No. So I really want to, I want to see what's out there, like, for the bear. It's only had two seasons. And I'd be interested in, like, what people come up with. Um, the other one is I've been watching, I've been working my way through um, what we do in the shadows. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So I want to, I want to dig into some fanfic, but I want to catch up because I think I'm on yeah. season three or four, I think, right now. Four. I'm on season four fair um which i think is one season mm-hmm. back uh for whatever the current one is um so i, I kind of want to catch up before i like dive into it but i'm having a really good time good. and also it fully cosplaying guillermo for, yeah. <laughs> for awesome con in march do it yeah i have to remake my professor jacket because i washed it and it shrunk oh. to the size of a doll <laughs> <laughs> It's a real sad day. I'm so... I picked it out of the wash. And I was like, "This is real, professor sized. What happened?" I didn't pre-wash the fabric. Oh, bummer. I wanted to make it anyway. It didn't fit very well. Well, there you go. It was fine. I just picked it up and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> so I had to remake my professor outfit. Bummer. I have leftover corduroy from my corduroy jacket that I made. Oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna remake it in corduroy instead. Oh, the tan corduroy. Delightful. Yeah. I love that. I that's going to be better. A really beautiful j- coat. I yeah, really yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, any fandoms you're excited to to explore in the coming season? I don't choose the hyperfixation. The hyperfixation chooses me. That's accurate. So I don't know. Um, we haven't talked about this very much. But I've gotten really into Ted Lasso fan fiction. Oh, yeah. We did not talk about that at all. Uh, I need to watch that. We were going to do a Christmas <laughs> holiday oh, episode yeah. where we actually read fanfic. And then we decided, fuck that, because we just didn't have, us in, <laughs> have it in us to do it. But the fic that I had chosen was Ted Lasso. Oh, yeah. And I was going to talk about it then. So maybe in the new year, I'll pick yeah. a Ted Lasso fic. I, I, didn't, I didn't love that fic anyway. I just wanted to talk about Ted Lasso. Been there. Um, but so I hope maybe there will be a prompt that will make more sense than I can pull a Ted Lasso fic that I'm like excited about. Excellent. Not that that fic was bad. It just wasn't 
it wasn't one that I was like, we got to talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a fandom that I have been in. So it's not like a new fandom, mm-hmm. but it's one that we haven't talked about on the podcast. Yeah. Um, that's exciting. I haven't seen Good Omens. You should watch Good you Omens. Should. Yeah. I met David Tennant <laughs> in New York Comic Con. <laughs> uh sheer dumb luck i went with mine uh yeah yep he was very nice god as one would expect yeah i mean she had they he had a, a show with um michael sheen uh staged which was oh, like yeah, all the throughout zoom the, show? yeah the zoom show through the he pandemic yeah i had a good time I, yeah. I watched that fully i was like huh Fun. delightful yeah maybe i'll get back into bandom <laughs> fun there there's a resurgence <laughs> i know it is like emo kid yeah this was the year of the emo kid it's the like, emo kid renaissance yeah the emo kid millennials i mean we saw in september of 2022 me and caitlin saw my chemical romance mm-hmm. um we're going to green day yep. in summer we're going to fallout boy and jimmy Eat world she's seeing blink 182 delightful i'm seeing the rolling stones which is a different thing <laughs> yep but um yeah it is definitely like concerts are back yeah they scare me a lot. I wear very heavy duty masks when I go to concerts because uh, boy are they scary. But um I go anyway. Fun. <laughs> but yeah. Emo kid for real. Maybe I'll get back into Green Day fan fiction. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. They're kinda old now. <laughs> <laughs> they were always older than me, but now I look at them and I'm like mm. And what does and old people can't have adventures? They can do whatever they want. It's just it's a different thing. Mm. I they they were at New Year's. <laughs> We got to stop this podcast at some point, but we could just stream of consciousness this for the next like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we stayed up to Caitlin and my friend Emily came over and we did um, the New Year's Eve thing where we stayed up and Green Day was playing in California and they were like playing their little punk music. And I was like, oh, dad rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. They're no. so like they've reached that point. Yeah. Where you're like old man shakes fist at sky. Mm-hmm. I love them. I sure. do. I absolutely adore them. And that's not meant to be like. It's not a diss so much. It's yeah. just a recognition of like the relationship is different now. Yeah, fair enough. Things change. See, they played a they played a subway <laughs> recently. They did play a subway with a uh, good old Jimmy Fallon, mm-hmm. who I fucking hate. Yeah, that is a that diss. Guy. Fuck him. Yeah, I've always gotten the ick from him, and I feel like I've been vindicated. Yeah, um, I've always thought he was. Yeah, meh. He was, there was always something about him that I was just like, mm, you seem really me. fake. Yeah. He's also annoying. He doesn't let people talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, pot kettle. But. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm incorrect. I would very not Very different. That. He's just so obnoxious. He is. Yeah. I've also, one of the things that is interesting that I think I'm going to have to navigate um, moving forward is that I've really lost any, F, like, any ability to care about celebrity culture. Great. In the last, like, how long has it been? Since <laughs> October 7th. <laughs> um, truly. Like, I've just not been able to bring myself to really be invested in celebrity culture at all like i divested all like i removed all the celebrity accounts from instagram except for hosier because i just couldn't like i couldn't take it anymore yeah i was like it's so fake but i'm so interested in fandom culture Mm. and like focusing on stories again rather than like stan culture where it's like about the people yeah far more interested in like the art of it i love that yeah that's great so i guess that's I'm, i'm interested it's not even like what fandoms it's like fandom fandom i'm interested in fandom in the new year i love that so i think um and on that note we should probably wrap up we should (laughs) i feel like i made shepherd's pie and that has really sustained us in a way that i'm surprised by it was delicious (laughs) it was really good but also we like don't normally have this much energy for a late recording yeah agreed we've gotten a little punchy well once again thank you for listening to the thick list thanks for tuning in this is it for season five (sighs) Oh, Isn't that nuts? five seasons. Yeah. Where does the time go? We're going to be on season six. Season six. Wow. Yeah. Let us know. Reach out. Um, let us know what you want to see from season six. What are some mm-hmm. things that you like liked from this season that you would want to see again? Um, mm-hmm. Or otherwise, what tags do you want to hear us talk about? Because yeah. the tags are coming back. One thing that we're talking about for season six is um, partnering with small fandom oriented businesses to Mm. do episode sponsorships at a low cost. Yeah. So if you run a small fandom business, be it maybe you make dice, maybe you do fan art, uh, maybe you do, I don't know, merch. I don't know. I don't know what people do. Sweatshirts. Yeah. If you're somebody, if your fandom business 
is interested in advertising with the Fick List um, at, and we're truly going to price it reasonably for small businesses because mm-hmm. we want to focus on small independent artists who are doing kind of the same thing that we're doing. It's like out of love for the thing. Mm-hmm. If that is of interest to you, email us at the Fick List at gmail.com um, and we'll talk. Yeah. That'll be fun. That's something that we're looking forward to. Great. Um, tell us um, how great we are. <laughs> please do if you don't like us then don't tell me that yeah keep it to yourself <laughs> i'm not interested in that information <laughs> i can't handle that my ego is fragile <laughs> <laughs> um yeah if you want to find us uh anywhere go to the ficklist.com that'll have our link tree you can find us on twitter mm-hmm. now x i guess um mm. the tumblr which is run by the inimitable caitlin um the ticky talkies which uh, you'll get the most direct contact from aaron if that's what you're still looking for we have a discord channel uh, that is 18 plus um yep. but a lot of really great conversations happening there every now and then we'll have a little game night too yeah so i think we're gonna do like a craft night oh at some point. i love that idea literally just like sit chat craft yeah hang out and craft what i would lovingly refer to as a stitch and bitch <laughs> genius <laughs> yeah I, that is not me that, that is a costume shop time honored tradition oh, a stitch and bitch it's a good one yeah it's good we're gonna do that at some point so yeah, yeah. feel free to reach out um interact with us as any yeah. in any way that you'd like um, we're not disappearing no we're just, we're just trying to take a break yeah we're, ta- we're, <laughs> we're just taking a nap <laughs> just a little nap until march, <laughs> yeah, until march. <laughs> uh, it will be fine yeah and we'll be back before you know it yep it'll be pride yep We'll be back for Pride is what will happen. Uh, yes. Yeah. As as, as this tradition, as we will we will rise again <laughs> at Pride. <laughs> like Mushu. <Ooh. laughs> yep. Cool. All right. Well. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, friends. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I slept on the horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.